everybody, welcome to Brickball. My name's Jack. Today is a LEGO DC Comics superhero set. This is Batman Harvester of Fear. This set is recommended for ages 7 to 14. It is set number 76054 and it has 563 pieces. Included are five minifigs. We've got Scarecrow, Killer Moth, we've got a Farmer, Blue Beetle, and Gas Mask Batman. The set really consists of three vehicles. We've got Scarecrow's Harvester, another reinterpretation of Batman's Batcopter, and a pretty decent build for a tractor. All right, let's check out what's inside the box. So inside the box, we've got four bags. We've got another bag with some uh, tube pieces and the Lego separator, as well as a bag with two manuals and just a couple of stickers. So let's get started right now. So the build is done. We've got some really, really awesome vehicles for this set and some absolutely great minifigs. Let's start off with the minifigs. Here is the new Batman, or Gas Mask Batman. This is the first Batman fig we've gotten in all black in uh, quite a while, I think. And he's got some great details here. I'm really liking all the mechanical and metallic stuff going on, but I think one of the nicest details for the body are the green lines used to show the muscles underneath all the suit armor. It makes for the effect that the suit has a dull green kind of glow. Batman's got two expressions. One is a regular sort of disgruntled face and the other one looks really, really cool with printing for a breathing apparatus. But heck, Batman also just comes with this breathing apparatus piece. Ultimately, he's a really nice redesign for Batman and we are very happy to add him to the collection. But here is Scarecrow. He's got some really nice detailing. This is definitely more reminiscent of Scarecrow from the early comics, and he doesn't actually look too far off from what you might have seen in the animated series. Great detailing all over the body that show his sort of raggedy kind of clothes, and I'm really liking what they did with the head. He looks creepy as heck, but he's also got some stitching that goes down on the back of the head. This is, of course, if you take off the nice mold used for his hat and hair. Definitely a lighter brown used for this Scarecrow than the original one from the Arkham Asylum breakout set, but the print for this guy's face is surely a lot creepier. Now this set came with a couple of lesser known heroes and bad guys, and with this new wave of DC and also Marvel sets, I'd say these new minifigs are some of the biggest draws for people to buy the set. At least I think so. Here is the Blue Beetle, and he looks fantastic. The detailing for the body is absolutely awesome. He's the only minifig here with dual molded legs, and he comes with two different unique molds that make up his armor. The first one that goes on is this great piece to show his wings. And if you look up close at the actual design, there's a sort of kaleidoscopic effect. Kaleidoscopic is not the right word, but definitely there's some sort of magnification happening. It's one of the coolest molds I've seen in Lego. And the extra blue piece that goes on top of that also looks really nice as well. Certainly one of the more unique heroes from the Lego DC side. And I really like that we managed to get him. And for the villains, we also got a really nicely detailed, not so common villain, the Killer Moth. I'm tempted to say that every single thing about this minifig is great. Best detail for sure is the printing that go all the way around the sides of his legs, and the incredibly bright mold for the trans orange wings, plus the mold for his helmet. But LEGO did one thing with this minifig, and they do this every now and then, I'm just not the biggest fan, and that is when a character has their face almost entirely covered by a mask, I don't understand why there are two expressions. He's got the one side that shows his awesome visor expression and a solemn face, I like that. And the other side shows his eyes and he looks kind of terrified. When he's got the mask on, you could never see that expression. And because he doesn't come with an alternate hairpiece, it wouldn't really make sense for him to have his mask off in order to see the expression. Yeah, I know that's kind of a silly problem that's really kind of a non-problem. But let's check out the coolest minifig in the entire set. The, uh, <clears throat> the, the farmer. 
No, he's not a bad minifig. He actually has some nice detailing for the uh, sort of dirty wife beater shirt. And he certainly looks very scared. And that's because I'm pretty sure in the set he's getting chased by this. The Scarecrow's Harvester is a really awesome build. We've got a nice shape for the combine here, but certainly its best feature is when you drive it around. This spiky trans yellow piece in the center is used as a gear and it turns the combine when you push it forward. Makes for a really great effect when you drive this thing around. And strangely enough, because the serrated edges are kind of curved, when you go in reverse, the rotator doesn't actually follow in tandem. This combine somewhat reminds me of the Joker Steamroller from a different set, and it would have been nice to compare these two, but we might have completely destroyed the steamroller. Anyways, there's a lot more to talk about for the rest of the build of this harvester. There's a seat right in the center, and on the left-hand side of there, we've got a single stud gun that doesn't shoot just regular studs, but I'm pretty sure this is Scarecrow's sort of fear gas canisters. I think this is a better thing to shoot other than studs. You can't lose these pieces nearly as easily. And the designers did a really nice thing here where you get to keep your extra ammo, not just in a little hidden compartment, but as sort of a main feature of what is the harvester of fear. The giant gas chamber right behind the seat holds all the canisters. We've got some great bit of building around there that make it look a little bit more menacing. And there's even some valves on the side and another gas line. Now what you can doubly do with this gas chamber, which is awesome, which maybe some of you have already thought of, is you can open it up and use it as sort of a prison chamber for some guy that you've captured. This makes it one of the coolest features on a vehicle because not only does it look awesome, but it performs two different functions and it performs both of them very well. Now usually superhero sets are somewhat skewed from one side to another. Almost always the good guys are given quite a bit more firepower against the evil bad guys, but here things seem to be pretty even. This is Batman's new Batcopter and it looks very beefy. First of all, I really like that they added a bit of blue here. Usually he's just all black or some gray in there, but they managed to throw in enough sort of colorful highlights to make him look a little bit different. And second off, I'm really liking the actual look of the copter. It's very solidly built and it's got a great shape, especially when you look at it from the top down. Aside from, of course, the cockpit opening and being able to see Batman inside, this copter really just has one main feature, but it's really cool. When you push the tail towards the body, it actually sinks inside, and as it does this, it moves around some Technic pieces on the inside, and it pushes out two double stud shooters on either side of the copter. You can see sort of on the outside of this function that there's a build that kind of looks like they could be weapons, but the actual shooters are on the inside, and it's just such a nice looking function when they pop out. You can actually pull the sides out a little bit further. The tail only pushes them out so far, and actually you do need to do this if you want to end up shooting the studs. And I gotta say, I just really appreciate a vehicle having a morph function that is a true attack mode. You can only attack if you do this function. All right, and the very last thing I'm gonna point out is that I really like the top propeller blades. They're built nice and thick, which is nice. Thin propeller blades almost always break off when you try to spin them too hard. But I gotta say, what is going on with that little propeller blade in the back? This is not the first time I've seen a disproportional set of blades on a helicopter, but the size difference here between the top main blade and this little one in the back is very, very big. All right, now let's check out the very last build in this set, and it almost feels like an added extra, like they could have possibly just gotten away with not having this other vehicle, but I really like that they included it. It's the simple tractor for the farmer, and I like this build for the tractor maybe more than what you might actually see for a LEGO City set. It's got a very distinct tractor look to it, a quality build for the seat, I'm liking the exhaust pipe and the light on the sides, and even the sticker detailing fits pretty well. And taking all that away, definitely my favorite feature here is this little piece they added right in the back. This is for a ball joint, and this means you can pull a trailer if you have one. None of that came in the set, but it just goes to show that the designers very much intend for this vehicle to be able to be used in other sets or other scenarios. That is just so nice considering that I think most people probably wouldn't have batted an eye if they had just given the farmer something like a lawnmower. Okay, and I think with that, here's the whole set together, and this feels like one of the more complete superhero sets I've seen in a while. We've got two excellent vehicles on both sides. They each have very successful action functions, and most importantly, they kind of feel like they're almost evenly matched. This is rarely the case with a superhero set, and now this actually feels like it could be a legitimate battle. This idea also extends over to the minifigs. We got some awesome minifigs, and the sides are, once again, very even. Now, there are only two other sets from Marvel or DC that I have not yet built from this Summer Wave 2016, but so far, this one's looking like my favorite. All right, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Remember, if you want to buy the set, I have left a link in the video description below. And if you enjoy our content, you can always subscribe or like this video. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.